Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today we're going to do something very, very special. I'm going to show you how to make your own custom fonts on one of your tablets. In today's video, we're going to be using Books Note Air and the Books platform. But if successful and if cool, then I'm going to be definitely checking it out on the Supernote and the Remarkable platform as well in the next video. So let's check this out. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is you go to the calligrapher.com, uh, I believe. Yes, calligrapher.com. There are plenty of tools available. This is the one, the, the one that seemed most fun to me. I'm just showing it as an example. So once you get there, you do need to create an account, but it's a free account. It's not obligatory. It's not a subscription or anything like that. It is a limited account, so it allows you to have like uh, one font and uh, limited functionalities and all that kind of stuff. And if you're interested in more, then you can just click on pricing and then you see the difference between the uh, free and the pro model. So the main difference is that, um, yeah, if you want to do go bananas completely and create tons of uh, fonts and all that kind of stuff and have unlocked features, then it says uh, eight bucks for one month or four bucks per month for six months upgrade. But the cool thing that I do like about it is that they don't offer a recurring subscription. They just offer you these two things. So you can pay eight bucks for one month and then do it. So that's kind of cool, especially seeing how, uh, yeah, once I tried it, it's kind of addictive and fun. But this whole point is not about the calligrapher, even though it's an awesome platform. It's about how to create our own handwritten fonts using the uh, tablets, in this case, the Books Note Air. So the very first thing that you do is you get to this Get Started for free. You register an account, uh, you'll get a confirmation email, and that's it, then you're good to go. So so once you're done with that, then you can log in. So when you log in, this is basically your uh, homepage, how it looks like. And you have two things and the instructions are right there. So it's made perfectly. As far as I'm concerned, it's super easy. So first you need to create a template that you want and print it out. In our case, we don't need to print it out. We can just download it as a PDF or a PNG. Then you fill it out on our tablet. Then we don't use the scanner and digital camera because we filled it out on our tablet and it's already in in a digital format and um, yeah so being you basically then you uh, export and save your PDF or PNG of the filled out template upload it here and build the font and use it so let's see how that works when you go to templates in order to create a template you click on the elements that you want so I'm gonna use minimal English which is gonna add these characters to the whole thing and I'm gonna add minimal numbers and minimal punctuation. All right, so as you can see, as you click on these, they actually uh, fill up the set so that that's actually a good one. Now, you hit a limitation, so there are currently 79 characters or ligatures in template, but the free version supplies only supports 75 glyphs per font. So that's a limitation. So I'm just gonna remove all, and I'm gonna do minimal English and minimal numbers. So that's within the limit and that's fine. So now that I've built up my uh, template, I'm just going to go download template. And then you can choose the size. I'm going to choose the biggest size. And I know that's going to be a multi-page PDF, but I don't really care. Uh, the only thing I care is that it's large enough so that the resolution of writing is crisp and good enough so that it can actually convert everything properly. So that's something that I'm going to do and I can choose PNG or PDF. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it's up to you. But for convenience sake, I'm just going to use a PDF because it's going to be a single file, uh, not one file per page. And you also can have an option characters as a background. I'm going to click that just for this example. And it would be a good idea to actually do that uh, when you're just starting out so that you can get used to how the letters are supposed to sit in the template itself. So now that I have that set up, um, I'm just going to name it uh, YouTube example font. All right. Or template. Font template. There we go. I'm going to download, it's going to process, there we go, and now I need to click here to download it, and there we go. So this is a template that it created, which is great, that's exactly what I want. So the step two is now to simply download this and um, yeah, get it onto your device. 
All right, and here we are on the books note air. This is the document that I exported from Calligrapher. And one of the things to kind of notice, it's a multi-page document, of course. Maybe you can see the uh, characters that they're very, very faint, which is like a guideline where or the rough size of the character where it should lie in the field itself. But before I begin, one thing that's important is that these boxes and the QR code, they need to remain unobstructed. So don't fill them in, don't draw over them or anything like that. Otherwise, that's going to confuse the system. So leave them unobstructed on all of the pages. And also, if you don't want the uh, big characters superimposed in the fields, you'll notice that on the upper part of each field, you have the character that is uh, responsible for that field. So very, very easy to do. So all you need to do now is just fill it in the way you want. And since I'm using rather large uh, formats, I'm using a larger brush, I believe something like uh, seven, eight, actually eight size. So that's something to kind of keep in mind, but you can experiment and see what works. So let's fill it in and uh, see what we get. All right, so there we go. All are filled in and I don't really need to do anything. I can just go here and export as a PDF so that I have everything kind of saved. I'm just going to use the original colors and now we can go to the computer and check it out, upload it and check it out. All right, so here is the filled in PDF that I exported from the note and you can see that it's all the way it was. So that's the one that I need. And that's the one that I'm going to be uploading back into the calligrapher to get these as my font. All right, so now we're back in the calligrapher. And all I need to do now is go to my fonts and upload a template, right? So I'm just going to click on upload a template, choose a file, and it's going to be this one that's filled in. So that's the one that we just filled in automatic automatically clean up templates and upload. So now it's doing its magic. All right, so it processed and now it actually has all the stuff that we've done in individual characters and vectorized and all that kind of good stuff. Now, the cool thing, the really cool thing that I haven't tried out yet because I still have the free uh, version of the account is to basically you can upload another template as template variants. So you can randomize your font so that A or the characters uh, when they're typed, they don't have to look exactly the same each time. So you can write up up to, I don't know, four or five different variations of sheets. You can upload them here, process them, and then get an even more complete uh, template. So that's something that I'm going to try out later. For now, I'm just trying out this basic thing to see how that works. So we can add these characters to my font because they look fine. They look like I did them. So this is my font, which is kind of cool. Um, and now I can just, uh, yeah, I could edit font details like the name. So let's call this um, underscore MDG example font one, right? So we'll just, all right, so something like that. My deep guide example font one letter spacing font size word spacing i'm just going to leave these out because i don't know uh what they will do at this moment because i haven't tested it enough but what i'm really excited about is to build the font so this is the name that we gave now the thing that i talked about if you had multiple templates uploaded you would be able to click on randomized characters and then it would build a randomized font so now we click on build wait a while 
And there we go. So this is our example font, which is way <laughs> which is pretty awesome. All right. So obviously, uh, oh, the smileys are ah, yeah. I don't have these are the characters that I don't have. But overall, this is pretty frigging awesome and so much fun. Now, obviously, the exclamation mark is too large. Yeah, but the question mark is fine. Yeah, so obviously it's a tool like anything else that you have to kind of um, start uh, uh, getting used to, but there we go. So now I have my handwritten font uh, here. So now I can just increase the size or decrease the size. It's functioning normally. And uh, yeah, you can download it here. So I can download it as a TTF or a OTF. Now, the second thing that I want to try out is that because um, Books Note Air has the ability to actually use uh, custom fonts. So I'm just gonna load up my font that I created on it and see how that works if I can read a text document or an EPUB using my own handwritten font. So let's check that out. I'm just going to download this and then move on to the Note Air. All right, I copied the OTF font. So that's the number one thing you have to remember is you don't use the TTF on the books uh, platform. You use the OTF format and both are available when you download. Now, the second important thing is that you can go to the directory that you've downloaded it, but you have to be in the storage mode. You can't be in notes or on the library because, I mean, you can go to the place where it's actually uh, downloaded but you won't see it simply because in library mode it actually is recognizing only the readable formats such as PDF, text files, EPUB files, etc. In a notebook it actually is only interested in notebooks themselves. So since the font format, OSTF format, is neither of the two, you have to be in the storage mode to actually see that one. So that's point number one. And now if I go to where I saved it, I can see that this is where I saved my MDG example, one regular .otf font. Excellent. So now I can just copy. And once I'm in copy mode, I need to navigate into where the, where the font needs to be copied because it has to be placed into a specific location. Now, the specific location is the fonts folder in the root of your uh, device. So when we say root of a books device, that doesn't mean here, it means in storage. So in the storage one, you need to have a fonts folder. Most likely, if you haven't played yet around with custom fonts, you don't have that folder. So I deleted what I had from before so that you can have the same situation. So you can check it out. If you have the fonts folder, copy the newly created font in there. If you don't have the fonts folder, you first have to create the fonts folder. So it's going to be capital F O N T S. I don't think that the capitalization matters, but why not? So fonts, not font, but fonts. There we go. So now we have it. Now I can go in and now I can paste the OTF format or the font that I made in my fonts, which is great. So now we can go to the library and test it out and see what we get. So let's see, we have an EPUB file here. And this is how it is formatted normally. So let's just hide this, we don't need it. Oh, I don't have touch enabled. There we go, we can enable touch and hide this. So now to set up your custom font and see if it works, you tap in the middle to get the options, you go to the format. And now in the format, we have the typeface and currently I'm using Roboto. So if I go to dots here, you have Chinese English and then you have custom. And if we've done things correctly, there we go. MDG example font one. So now I click on this. <laughs> and there it is. Let me zoom in so that you guys can see better. This is pretty freaking cool. Of course, it's very small, so let's make it a lot bigger. Let's do it like this and then see how that works. Can we embolden it? Huh, it actually works even like that. So there you have it. Um, I'm reading 
an EPUB with the font, custom font that I drew up and actually made on my books note air. This is absolutely freaking awesome. And this is without randomization or anything like that. So I can see this as being incredibly addictive um, because I just want to start making it more and more and more and more. So for me, this is super fun and really, really cool. Well, I'm really, really happy how this turned out. And what I'm surprised is how simple it is when you actually figure everything out that I've showed you where to put the font and all that kind of stuff. But once you actually know all of these things, it's absolutely awesome that you can just write up your font, upload it, process it, get it into the device and then yeah, go, go ahead and have fun with it. So for me, this is super cool and super awesome. I think it worked out really, really well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the eight bucks uh, one month subscription because I'm interested to see and test out further um, how does that randomization uh, feature work. And it also has the ability to maybe even connect. Maybe that's a little bit out of outside of the scope for the time I have for this week for YouTube videos. But this week I want to focus on the fonts making. So in the next video on Thursday, I'm going to be checking out the Supernote A. 5x and remarkable 2 and also the randomization feature so i'm going to go through the whole process that i've used uh, here expand a little bit on it to test out how does that work and also check out how does the workflow work on the supernote and remarkable platforms i hope you found the video fun and interesting if you did please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell to get notified when the second video comes out where i test out further on um, this font madness Thanks for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye!